And finally, Friday morning, it's Willie Tyler on the phone. Happy to announce this morning, co-founder of the Beach Boys, Mr. Mike Love. Hey, Willie. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you, too, in Montana, long way from the beach. Well, yeah, but there are rivers. There are rivers. <laughs> We've got some lakes. Lakes. <laughs> Couldn't be much more landlocked than we are, though. Um, I assume you've been to Montana before. I, I think after 50 years, there's probably very few places on this planet that you haven't been. Well, we're a little light on Yemen and, you know, Saudi Arabia. We haven't gone there. But we've got a lot of places in Europe. And coming up, we're going to Australia, and then we're going to to uh, Austria and then Germany oh, wow. uh, all through December. That's, well, yeah, so we we get around. <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely do. Uh, of course, uh, you know, every generation kind of has their favorite artists, but you guys unbelievably have spanned across – multiple generations from, you know, grandparents to all the way down to their, their grandkids. I know. It's really cool. We, some, the other day we had a show in, in, in uh, San Diego, California, which is basically home state, you know. Sure. And there was a 90-year-old lady on stage with us, along with a 9-year-old girl doing Barbara Ann. That is and, uh, unbelievable. The ninety-year-old lady said that that was the most fun I ever had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool that uh, you know all through those years, and you're never really just a band. You kind of created a, an entire lifestyle. You know, back in the the surf sound, uh, how many surfboards do you think you guys helped sell back then? Huh? A lot, I bet you. <laughs> but you know, we the Beatles and Motown, we sold a heck of a lot of. Uh, not only records, but record players and car radios and, you know, all kinds of things. So, you know, when we started out, there weren't any rock groups. There were rock and rollers like uh, Little Richard and Chuck Berry and, and, and Everly Brothers and, of course, Elvis and uh, and others. But rock groups, the Beach Boys, I think, were the, the first boy band. And then the Beatles came along, then the Rolling Stones. And then I like to say all hell broke loose. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Well, in, in the beginning, let's kind of go back to the to the beginning. It was sort of a, a perfect storm of influences for you guys in the band to make that Beach Boys sound, right? Because everybody kind of brought a little something to the table. Right. Well, we, we doo-wop is a big influence. The Everly Brothers and their blend was phenomenal and great songs, fun songs. Uh, but, uh, you know, the four freshmen were a group that started out in the late 40s, but they were really popular during the uh, late 50s when we actually, my cousin Brian and I, we actually learned a few of their arrangements, and we still do one to this day. In fact, tonight we'll do Their Hearts Were Full of Spring, just four parts, just a cappella, and it's a beautiful song, and it's really great to be able to sing that kind of, that way, you know, just, just all the way down to just vocals. So we yes we had a lot of influences. Chuck Berry is a big influence, and in not only the the guitar playing people, but but for me the, is is the lyrics, the way he you know um, wrote out those lyrics to, to to correspond with the what was going on in the music. Right. And so that was a huge influence for me. Well, and you guys, for me, I think everybody kind of, you know, starts discovering music at, at you know, a fairly young age. Uh, I started mm -hmm. at a very young age, and, and I think the Beach Boys were probably one of the first bands that I really knew. I, I think it was easily the first band that I knew everybody's name. That was the thing, like, you know, you could, you could look at the front of the tape or whatever, and I knew everybody's name. Uh, but then you, you kind of got a whole new crowd of, uh, uh, of, of fans in the late '80s, when Kokomo came out on the on the cocktail soundtrack, yes, and you know what? Uh, about people becoming aware of the Beach Boys, our appearances on Full House with John Stamos yeah. has been a huge thing. I mean, in fact, he was with us the other night in in uh, in in the L.A. County Fair down in Pomona, California. He came out, and and now he has a new program called Grandfathered. Of course, he's known mostly for being Uncle Jesse on Full House, right? And those reruns have introduced us to, you know, consecutive generations. It's pretty amazing. We get recognized from being on that show, and so that's been a it's been a nice reinforcement of our music and the Beach Boys' career. Yeah, kind of came came around at a perfect time, huh? Yeah. Well, and you guys you guys perform with Stamos occasionally, correct? Yeah, he came out the other night, and sometimes when he has time off, right now he's working on this new program 
grandfather, the new series. Uh-huh. But when he's not doing a show or he's not doing a Broadway play or a movie or something, he loves nothing more than to come out and play drums with us. And, and we like it a lot because, you know, everybody gets a big kick out of it. For a lot of people, it's a surprise that he shows up. But he's a darn good drummer and a really good show person. You know, he's a showman. And, uh, you know, it, it, he's been a good friend over the years. And, and we've known him since 1985 when he came out to Washington, D.C. and did a big, huge show there with us. He was Rocky on General Hospital. Okay. I mean, Blackie. I'm sorry, Blackie. Uh-huh. <laughs> No, I certainly remember the Full House. I'm I'm of that age where I remember the Full House episode quite well, and and yeah, it was a good one. That was great. Yeah, and we go back a, a couple of years now. You guys had just done your big 50th anniversary tour in the new album. Yep, and that makes we what did. 29 albums, something like that. Yeah, and and we've recorded maybe 300 songs or more. <laughs> so wow, that's re- a lot. I read somewhere this morning. I don't know if they have exact. Uh, numbers of how many albums sold with you guys, but in the hundreds of millions, right? Well, I don't know about hundreds of millions, but it's it's a it's a lot. And when you consider worldwide, I mean, the Beach Boys were voted the number one group in Great Britain, number two being the Beatles, number three being the Stones. That was in 1966 when Good Vibrations went to number one. Wow! But then Kokomo came along 22 years later, and that was actually said to be the Biggest hit we ever had, biggest single record. But we have some other great ones, too, which we'll do tonight, like California Girls, I Get Around, Fun, 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 Help Me, Rhonda, Barbara Ann, you know, all, a, a ton of a ton of songs. And we're very blessed to be able to do what we do for five, going on five and a half decades now. Right, and Bruce has been with you since, what, like when Glenn Campbell left, what, it was 65 or something? Yeah. Yes, 65. In fact, California Girls, the song California Girls was the first song that Bruce sang with us. And then, of course, that same year we did Barbara Ann uh, on a party album. And then the year after was Pet Sounds and Good Vibrations. So he he came in at a really incredible time. So going, going back to that surf music and then into Pet Sounds and then into Kokomo and everything in between, what was kind of your favorite period of the Beach Boys? I know I have so many favorite songs. It's it, it, it's hard to hard to pin down because you know if you're in a one kind of mood, you might like God only knows. You might like uh, we have a song called In My Room, oh, The yeah. Warmth of the Sun, Surfer Girl. Those are mellow ballads and stuff. But then if you're in an upbeat mood, Fun Fun Fun, and I get around and Surf in the USA. It's hard to beat those. In mid temples like California Girls and Kokomo and Good Vibrations. I mean, so there's so many great records. You know, Help Me Rhonda, not bad either, went to number one. <laughs> yeah, right. It did okay. But we do them all. We do them all on our show tonight at the Alberta Bear. And, and uh, you know, it's sold out, basically, is what I walked by there uh, just yesterday and saw it on the marquee. It's, it's it's sold out. So. That's yeah. That's my understanding. <laughs> Luckily for our listeners, I have the last pair of tickets right here in my hand, along with uh, meet and greet for tonight with you guys. Outstanding. That's cool. And I uh, I am fortunate enough to uh, get to uh, introduce you guys tonight, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Very nice. Um, we look forward to meeting you in person, not just over the phone. Yeah, we've <laughs> talked a few times this week. It's been pretty cool. That it's, it's been a big uh, it's been a big thing for me. Well, thank you. It's 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 really an honor to be be here at a sold out show in Billings, and and we we're so happy to be here. Uh, unfortunately, we have to take off after the show and go to uh, Minot, North Dakota, because we have a show there at one o'clock tomorrow. Afternoon. Oh man, that is unfortunate, Minot, North Dakota. <laughs> well, now wait a minute. Uh, it's called Norfest. It was started by the Norwegian people, I guess. And, that's true. And, uh, that's when they want us to perform. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> there you go. Well, I can't wait to see it tonight. 730, the Alberta Bear Theater. And like I said, uh, the final pair of tickets right now. Caller number 5245-6900. We get you in and we get you meet and greet passes with the Beach Boys. Uh, Mike Love, thank you very much for taking the time with me today. And I'll, uh, I'll see you tonight. Thanks, Willie. It's good talking to you, and we'll see you tonight. Bye-bye.